Hello and welcome to the Amrita School of Biotechnology presents Excellence Simplified in association with Republic TV. Biotechnology in India has emerged as the key player in the fight against the pandemic. Now the sector is growing exponentially and is poised to become one of the top 10 biotech countries in the world. With an ever rising demand for skilled biotechnologists both in India and abroad, this stream has emerged as one of the preferred career option amongst the youth. But which stream should one choose and what are the specialized fields of work and most importantly, how can one choose the right institution? And this is where the Amrita School of Biotechnology stands out. Today, we not only discuss the various aspects of biotech and the role it is going to play in changing the future of the world, but also explore the various aspects of the Amrita School of Biotechnology and what makes it one of the best institutes for biotech. To decode the company complex world of biotechnology, we have with us Dr. Bipin Nair. He's the Dean of the Amrita School of Biotechnology. Uh, Dr. Rustam Modi, he's the Senior VP of Sun Pharmaceuticals. We also have uh, Dr. Utpal Estatu. He's the Head of Department of Biochemistry of the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore and the Director of Equinine Biotech. And uh, joining us also on the show, Today is Maheshwar Pratap, he's an alumni and associate manager, uh, business analytics and project management of the Symbio Generics India Private Limited. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Nair, if we could begin with you now. A first question, obviously, uh, for anybody who's watching this show is going to be what is biotechnology and what essentially are its applications in the modern world? So biotechnology can be best described as a synergistic conglomeration of several intrinsic disciplines of the life sciences. Uh, and this results in the development of tools and technologies for the significant benefit of humankind. Now biotechnology requires and involves different domains, including biochemistry, molecular biology, cell biology, immunology, virology, plant science, and so on. And if you look at applications generated from expertise in biotechnology, wide range of applications, predominantly in the area of pharmaceuticals, where drug discovery and development is very dependent on expertise in biotechnology. Also in the field of agriculture, looking at improved crop yields, looking at enhanced nutritive value, looking at the development of drought and pest resistant uh, produce. And also from the point of view of medical and clinical uh, expertise, improved systems for diagnosis and treatment of several disease states and looking at treatment options for rare and complex diseases, developing genetic tools for better identification of inherited diseases and then more recently, the rapidly advancing areas with the involvement of artificial intelligence, looking at the possibility and bringing into the realm of possible uh, personalized medicine, including cell and gene therapy approaches. Right, uh, that was uh, quite a definition for all our viewers who are joining in. Uh, Dr. Modi, if I could come to you now. Now, what kind of role do you think biotech, uh, Dr. Modi, has played during the pandemic and how do you think the future is really shaping up for this sector? In 2020, when the first wave came, we were absolutely unprepared how to deal with it. We didn't have the diagnostic kits, we didn't have the vaccines then, and we really didn't know what is the best uh, uh, course of action uh, to fight the pandemic. But in just one and a half years from that day on, look at the situation where we are at, at this point of time. We have a, almost the most number of vaccines in the world that has come out from India. This is something by no way a, a small achievement. Even the most developed countries have probably put forward maybe three to four vaccines. And India has come up with 12 vaccines. We have been the pharmacy of the world, and now we have also been the, the source of vaccines for the rest of the world. And we have actually saved the lives of many of our countrymen through the development of biotechnology that speeded up in just last six months so much that right now it even sometimes 
uh, uh, really makes me wonder how fast we have progressed in every direction. So this is where biotechnology is, and I'm sure uh, students would understand that the future for India definitely lies with our developments of newer products, newer vaccines, and newer biotechnology-based products that can possibly have a ramification in terms of uh, saving essential lives or even treatment of chronic disorders and also maybe therapeutics that are required for the country at a much lower uh, kind of affordable price and also at a very, uh, uh, I would say, in a, in a very novel way, uh, this can be impacting the, uh, the progress of uh, the pharmaceutics. Absolutely, Dr. Modi, as you pointed out, India, of course, did pro, uh, you know, perform incredibly well during the pandemic. Uh, Dr. Tartu, if I could come to you now, uh, what is it that you envisage as the role of biotech in making India really a world leader in healthcare? Yeah, I think uh, India is ideally poised, actually, to, to, to have a tremendous impact internationally in this area of you know, what, what is broadly defined as biotech, as Dr. Bipin Naya very nicely explained. Uh, on the one hand, you know, we have wonderful institutions uh, you know, like Amrita University, for example, and then other research institutions which have trained fantastic manpower, fantastic set of students who are now ready to take on problems related to biotechnology, uh, which include human health, animal health, environment, and whatnot, I think. So India is, in some ways, uniquely placed. On the one hand, we have this very well-trained young people in the country. On the other hand, we also have the problems that need to be addressed by biotechnology. And as I mentioned already, be it you know, uh, infectious diseases, like Dr. Modi pointed out, it's a great example of what we did during infectious disease pandemic. But also, I think, ongoing problems in antimicrobial resistance, looking after animals, improving their health, looking at you know, how the air is impacting human health. All of these, I think, the low-lying fruit you know, where we could directly impact you, uh, human health in general. Uh, the market for these are present in India and also the problems are present in India. If you want to work on an infectious disease, if you are in the United States of America or Europe, you will have to bring samples from Africa and where not, to be able to research and apply biotechnological tools. In India, we have many of these right in front of us. This combination is going to be so important in taking India forward and where India will make an impact in the time to come. Absolutely. Uh, very well put there, Dr. Tatu. If I could come to you, Maheshwar, now, you know, uh, what really, according to you, are the big trends in biotechnology right now? And also, uh, uh, what are the kind of job opportunities that something like this will create? I think the biotech has no longer become the niche segment as such. With the pandemic, it has become, it has grown so much. It is poised to become about a $150 billion industry, right? And the government is also giving a lot of uh, a push to the industry. There is a growth in R&D investments. Even the recent budget said that there is a lot of investment towards backward integration. And uh, so that means that there is a lot of uh, uh, need for skill, there is a lot of opportunity for the light skill and talent in this industry. Right? When we go back and look for the roles, when we are trying to look for the roles that are there in biotechnology, there are four major roles that I would say that are there. And one is, of course, the research-related roles. With the pandemic, we see that there is a lot of opportunity for research in the labs. There is commercial research. There is R&D, academic research that is happening. There is a collaboration that is happening. And those kind of roles are there. Then there are production-related roles where you go to commercial manufacturing. There is quality. There is regulatory affairs. Then there are techno-commercial roles. Now, these are roles that are there in any organization. There is marketing. There is HR. There is uh, supply chain management. And there is a angle of biotechnology that you can bring into these uh, commercial roles. So there is a techno-commercial role. And like how uh, Dr. Bipin mentioned, there is a lot of data outburst right now. 
And because of that data outburst, there is a lot of associated roles that come along with it. So there is a lot of AI, there is data analysis, there is data analytics that comes into play, there is medical coding that comes into play. All these kind of roles are also there in biotechnology. Now, uh, when you talk of the environment, there are over 2,500 startups that has sprouted out. There are so many homegrown pharmaceutical companies that are hiring for biotechnology. So with the, we all understand that it is a highly regulated environment. The industry is highly regulated. But with the right talent and with the right skill, you will be able to find a very rewarding career in the space of biotechnology in India. So essentially, as you're pointing out, there's a lot to do in this uh, sector. Now, on that note, it's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. You are watching Amrita School of Biotechnology presents Excellence Simplified in association with Republic TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back uh, to this special series called uh, the Amrita School of Biotechnology presents Excellence Simplified in Association with Republic TV. Now, uh, going across straight to Dr. Nair. Dr. Nair, now, how does Amrita Vishwa uh, Vidya Peetam provide industry exposure really to biotech uh, students? Because that's extremely important, isn't it? So what we believe is that uh, for rapid progression, the career in biotechnology, the, the fundamental requirement is an interdisciplinary, hands-on science curriculum. And along with that, a real-world work experience that provides the students with that kind of a development goal. And to facilitate that, what we have done over the past 15, 20 years is had a research-intensive program with the last six months of the curriculum, the, the final semester, being a research only uh, exposure to research in industry, in academic labs, in, in uh, premier institutes across the country. So that by the end of their two year master's program, these students, as with other institutions also, they have developed all the right training and have all the skill sets that would be required for them to rapidly progress. So we have been benefited definitely from our close association with industry counterparts, uh, all the premier biotech and pharma companies in India, Biocon, Inta, Sun Pharma and the likes and research institutes like the Indian Institute of Science or NCBS, IGIB and TIFR and so on. So the exposure, the involvement, and the full implication of what that career entails is what we look for and provide that, that kind of a training uh, and that kind of a mindset, that awareness that this is what needs to be. One of the missions of the University of Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam is research which has a compassionate angle. Any research that is done has to be for benefit to the society. So that okay. also obviously does help them in a sort of a seamless integration into uh, the job market. Uh, Dr. Modi, if I could come to you next. Now, what really, according to you, are the challenges uh, that one faces in the Indian market and how do companies essentially overcome it? Biotechnology requires a huge amount of investments. Biotechnology drugs or drugs that come through a biotechnology route requires a lot of uh, R&D as well as investments in terms of infrastructure creation. And the cost of these drugs is, is definitely much higher than the small molecule based drugs, okay, the pharma drugs. Uh, this is where the problem comes about. How do we make these drugs affordable so that it can reach to the people in India? And in the last 10 years, uh, tremendous progress has, has come about. Much of the weightlifting has been done by either the government bodies or 
private institutions or companies that have everything integrated, right from the start clone development to the final formulation and finished product development. Every part of it is, is either run through by big pharma companies or by in support of the government. Here what we really need is some kind of a venture capitalist to come in and kind of also make sure that they, they recognize certain niche technologies and kind of create startups. And if we have more startups, there can be much more developments of newer drugs that India de desperately needs. Now let us look at the other side of the problem. The problem is also having the right skill developments. India has by far the best students from theoretical uh, learning point of view. But they do not get enough opportunity to work in a laboratory that has all the infrastructure. And that's where industry can participate in a supportive role, where by offering small internship programs for these students, especially when they are in the last semester of their master's program. Let's say if they spend six months in an industrial environment, they are likely to learn every nitty gritties that goes behind the development of a biotech drug. And this is where we have been all the time associated with Amrita University, where uh, we have seen some good students come to us for learning, and they go back uh, with the confidence that they can probably be good for any other industry to, uh, to work for. So this is what probably many universities uh, could benefit uh, through uh, association with the industry. Dr. Tatu, uh <coughs> You know, just furthering what he, are, uh, what he was speaking about, how is Indian biotechnology really driving innovation and uh, what kind of government support uh, do you think is needed to accelerate uh, that growth? I think we really need to define those areas specific to our country, the problems associated to our country and try and address those using the wonderful workforce and research aptitude that we have in our country. Government of India, actually, for example, has programs to support ideas. Any young person who has idea that addresses one of the national needs is supported by Government of India. Today, it's not difficult for somebody with a creative mind to go to the Government of <laughs> India and say that I want seed funding to address this problem. Well, I'll end by saying that examples are aplenty where there are successes in the programs already initiated by government of india and one of them being the amr initiative at amrita which i think we've talked about earlier i want to end very quickly by saying that one problem where we could do better in the years to come is reaching out to entrepreneurs to innovators to help them address regulatory needs this is where most of the innovators have problem that they have the innovations, they have the products. How do you get through the regulatory? And that's where I think government can do a little better to have a helping hand to get them into the market with their products and innovative ideas. Thank you. Very, very well put over there. Uh, let me go across to Maheshwar now. Uh, how is your association with uh, Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam really molded your career and your journey so far? I have been fortunate to go into industry from Amrita come back into academia and go back into the industry. So I finished my master's, then went and worked with Biocon for a brief period, came back into academia, into Amrita, uh, and then I'm back into the industry uh, for, and I work for a company called Symbiogenrics. We are manufacturers of API and we've been there for a little over a decade, uh, growing at about 25% in the last uh, three years, recently got funded, got to manufacturing facilities. So doing very well in the space of uh, backward integration like our other panelists were mentioning about. Uh, so we have been uh, growing in that space and I've been fortunate enough to work in some of the core projects with the senior management in Symbio uh, and be a part of its growth. And I think that would not have been possible without Amrita. There is a good mix of uh, uh, technical and commercial angle that Amrita is able to provide, which means that uh, some of our other panelists were mentioning about you know, academia probably not being ready with the uh, talent uh, for the industry. But uh, with Amrita, the kind of design that the program has been able to provide, uh, as alumni, I speak for a lot of them, we are able to hit the ground running. We are able to 
we are grooming industry ready professionals and which i think is the need for the society and for the country to grow and go to a great greater level right now all right now uh, dr nair we understand that uh, amrita has a dual degree program in association with the university of arizona now how does uh, that benefit sure that uh, is a <coughs> flagship program now that we have established over the past uh, three years, not too, too long ago. And uh, what we have done is, Amrita, as you know, is ranked as the number one private university in the country, also ranked among the top ten universities in the country. And uh, we teamed up with the University of Arizona, which is also among the top hundred universities in the world. And what we've done is a student who enrolls for our MSc Biotechnology Microbiology Bioinformatics program is able to also be eligible to be enrolled in the master's program in cell and molecular medicine from the University of Arizona. So in the two, same two year time frame, when the student is obtaining an MSc degree from Amrita, he or she is also able to get a master's degree from the University of Arizona. And in doing so, uh, at, at a cost where otherwise a, a, post, a postgraduate degree, uh, a master's degree in the United States may cost about $35,000. This is at about one-fifth the price. And in doing so, at the end of the two-year time frame, the student walks out with two degrees that makes them that much more eligible for furthering their career and, and that is what has been uh, a, a kind of a flagship program that we have started and uh, the results are also evident uh, just in the three years uh, that we have had this program running already five of our students who were enrolled in the dual degree program have already been inducted into the PhD program at the University of Arizona and two others have been able to uh, qualify for a PhD program at other universities including Ohio State. So what we feel is that this has given the right mix, it provides the right confidence for the students to learn from faculty who are engaged with these programs at the University of Arizona and these are not just uh, classes or quizzes or uh, assignments that are there is a live interaction with the faculty there on a daily basis and that gives the students that added edge over the rest of the competition and we are very happy with that it's a very successful program oh that's thank wonderful you. to know it does sound uh, extremely interesting uh, so uh, uh, thank you gentlemen for joining us on the broadcast so uh, what how we sum this up is that the demand for skilled biotechnologists is only going to rise in various industries. It will offer an array of subfields that will create multiple job opportunities for aspiring students. I hope this conversation will help our viewers clear their doubts uh, on this amazing topic and take the right steps towards a bright career.